Today you will find out how to combine Rhino and Grasshopper using Rhino inside Revit plugin. You'll discover how to parametrically control walls and have a seamless transition between Revit, Grasshopper and Enscape. Hey guys, Dushan here. Before we start, if this is your first time here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel as we upload new tutorials each week on Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use these tools specifically for architecture. We're also working on the show called How to Rhino Podcast, where we talk with young architects who share their career stories so you guys can have a better idea of what are some of your options when you finish architectural school. I highly encourage you to check those out after you finish with this video. The links are in the description. All right, so now let's get into Rhino inside Revit. All right, so first I will go to the uh, to the add-ins tab here in my Revit window. I'll click on Rhino uh, WIP. This means Rhino work in progress version. And once that is open, I will have a new tab that looks something like this. All right, and now simply we're gonna click here on Rhino and this will open up a Rhino window inside our Revit. And here we're gonna go to perspective and we're also going to simply open Grasshopper directly from this Rhino window. And that will open up our uh, our Grasshopper. And here I'm gonna go to the Revit, uh, Revit tab and I'm gonna simply choose uh, add wall component. Uh, once, once that is done, uh, let me just uh, also include uh, the bifocals so you guys can see uh, what's going on here. By focals, there it is. Okay, so now we have this uh, input. So we need a curve, we need type level, and we're gonna put all of this now. So now I'm gonna simply go here in my Rhino viewport and I'm gonna create one line and let's say 10 meters, something like this. And at this point, I'm going to use this curve. So I'm gonna create a curve here and I'm gonna add it like so. And you can see that uh, this curve will also be added automatically in my Revit window. So let's see that. So if I click here, you can see if I go here in the perspective, you can see that now I have this curve that is uh, located in my Revit window. There it is. Okay, but uh, what about it? So let's, let's move on. Let's see how we can transform this line to a wall. So we simply need to, to add this to, to the curve, but we also need to add a couple of other options as well. So the level we're gonna keep as default, uh, the height we can actually uh, put whatever number we want. So let's say uh, 300 centimeters for the height. Uh, location line, this can be, so let's keep it as default, it's wall center line. Uh, and uh, the type we need to choose here. So I'm gonna go to uh, the input and I'm gonna create here a model categories picker. And I'm also going to uh, to add another one, uh, element type picker. So this will actually tell uh, tell uh, uh, Revit what is uh, that we're actually creating here. So since we're creating a wall, I'm gonna scroll down and, and I'm gonna choose walls like so. And when I connect these two guys, it will actually give me here the list of all possible walls that I have in my Revit. So this, this is the list of all possible um, the walls that I can choose. So for example, let's let's go with curtain wall in this case. And uh, now I'm simply going to connect this to the type and I'm simply going to connect this uh, curve to my to my curve here. And this will create a wall. And now you will see this uh, in my in my um, rabbit window. You will see that it will create a wall. There it is. It's created here. It's it's a long wall, but just to give you an idea of, of what it can do. So let's, uh, maybe we can actually uh, control the length of this curve. So we can simply come here to Rhino and we can decrease the amount. We can say uh, minus 5,000 and it will make this curve uh, shorter and it will also update the wall directly in Revit. So let's take a look. You can see how our curve got much, uh, much uh, shorter. We can also do the same thing regarding the height. So uh, we can increase this number slider here and we can say, for example, uh, let's say 700. And now you can see how my my wall in Revit is actually uh, growing uh, and I, I'm having this family as a curtain wall and it's reflecting the change that I'm doing here. Uh, that's one way you can go about creating walls. Now let's make this a little bit more complex. Let's create uh, another curve here. Uh, this time we're going to create uh, an arc 
so let's say that uh, we want one arc from here to here, like so. And let's position it a little bit better here, 90, like something like this. So it's some, some kind of a curved wall. And we also want to use the same type of the same type of principles that we use here. So I'm simply going to duplicate all of this one more time. But uh, in this case, we're gonna create something else. I'm gonna disconnect this uh, this curve here. And uh, we are going to do something a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna select this curve and I'm gonna say set one curve. So now we have that, uh, that curve. And uh, in addition to that, I'm going to go here to the curve and I'm gonna choose a point point on a curve and I will make a copy so I will have let's say 0 and 0 0.5 so let's connect these and let me just show you what what's the idea here so you can see how this this point here now is going to be moving it's going to be moving alongside this this curve and that's the way that I can also control the length of my wall so I'm going to go here to my Parafish plugin to the curves and I will choose uh, I'll choose this option here uh, trim curve with points and this is uh, going to be pretty self-explanatory. So we have a curve and we have two points and we simply want uh, to have trimmed uh, version out. So you can see how now this becomes our, our line. So if I move this slider, I can see how my wall is gonna be moving as well. So that's the idea. The idea is that this is going to be the curve that's gonna be used for our wall here. But let's change something. Let's change the type of the wall to something else. So let's maybe uh, try interior wall and let's connect these two. And you can see directly uh, in my Revit window that this is going to be uh, created. Here, here is my wall. The thing is that uh, actually I'm not seeing this wall in my, in my Rhino viewport, viewport. So if I want to see this wall in my Rhino viewport, I can simply do the extrude command and I can say this is my base and this is going to be my uh, Z direction and I'm gonna put the same type of height as I have here uh, and that will give me the same result. So uh, let's let's try that like so. And here is the wall so I can see it uh, as a surface in my Rhino window but I can also see it here. So watch what happens when I change this number slider. So uh, I'm looking at my Revit window here and when I change this distance you can see how in my Revit window, it's automatically updating. Very cool. All right, so that's the second example that I want to show you. Now let's uh, let's go a little bit more complex. All right, so this time we're going to take uh, this curve. We're going to copy it here. Gonna make a copy, and let's see what we can uh, do with it. How we can make this a little bit more complex. All right, so we're gonna take this curve, and we're going to do a similar thing we did above. So let's set a curve. Let's select it here. And let's do the extend curve in this case. And we're actually, uh, we would like to create some kind of like a, like a circular wall here. So I'm gonna, I put the type to be the arc. And at the start, I'm gonna take one, zero, sorry. And here at the end, uh, let's say maybe something like this. And this will uh, create like the full circle all around. So I want to bring this down a little bit. So let's say something like until here. And uh, at this point, I want to do the same thing. I want to I want to do divide a length, and the length would be let's say one thousand, for example. Um, and the curve would be this one. Now I can see that I have division of of the length here. And I'm going to do the same command. So I'm going to take here trim curve with points, and I'm going to take this curve and these points and we're gonna have every second one like this. So now I can also create the, the extrude just for you to see uh, to see the where we're going here. So we're gonna do uh, Z factor and here we're gonna say, let's say um, five meters. So this is gonna be very big, but we can maybe lower down something like this. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go back and I'm gonna take this uh, component with these guys here. I'm gonna copy, paste, and here I'm just I'm just going to move from this point to this point here, and that will create uh, that will create my wall here. 
However, this time let's choose something else. So let's choose maybe um, some exterior. Let's say this one. And we also want to use the same height. So I'm gonna move the height here. And now you can see in my Revit window how I have a new wall. And if I zoom in, you can see that it actually has both the exterior end and the interior end. So a cool, a cool thing here that you can do, uh, you can actually directly from, from, uh, from Grasshopper here, you can use uh, Boolean toggle and uh, you can use the flipped option to flip these guys. So if you do true, you can see how now in my Revit window, the sides are actually getting flipped. And that's sometimes valuable when you want to do this. And uh, you can also say if you want it to be structurally used or no. So that would be what I wanted to show. And now here, of course, uh, let's watch a little bit of Grasshopper in action. So let's move one slider and let's see uh, what this will create. So for example, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna change this number slider here. And you can see as I'm increasing uh, the sliders here, you can see how my, uh, my uh, circle is closing in. And you can see also this in my, in my Rhino window and also in Revit window. Uh, and then I can also change the distance between these uh, elements. So I can actually do something else, let's say 3000, for example. And you can see now we have different kind of uh, disposition between the walls. So a uh, very cool thing to know how you can control this with, um, with the number slider here. Here is the height, so you can decrease the height uh, and so on. And then when you click here in Revit, it will be uh, the actual family that we took from, from Revit. So Rhino and, and uh, Grasshopper and Revit are talking with each other and then you're having this uh, kind of options. All right, so also wanted to show you one more thing here. Uh, let's copy this ball in toggle and uh, let's see what this allow joins option means. So for example, if I have an additional wall, let's see if I go on this side and if I zoom in here, and let's say that I want to create a wall from uh, from this point. So from here, going outward, uh, you can see that when I, when I finish the command, this wall will not be joined with this one. So that's because we have this option uh, turned on. So even if I actually extend this wall, you can see that it will not join. Uh, but if we have this option turned on, if I, if I check this to true, you will see that once once we position this in the correct way, uh, it will join and you will have uh, a, joined, a joined wall here. So that's also one uh, cool trick to know when you, uh, when you want to create uh, the wall. And also, of course, you can see, say if you want it to be structural or no. And one last thing that I wanted to show you here is the location line. So you have a couple of options. You have a wall center line, core, finish face exterior, and so on. So for example, watch what happens here if I go if I go very close to this line and now I'm going to I'm going to open uh, and change this location line settings so let's say core face exterior you can see how this will update and the whole wall will will change based on on, on the location line so uh, that's also something something to uh, to know and lastly, I wanted to show you one last thing here. Imagine that you want to see this in, in uh, real time and you want to see the rendering in real time and uh, the changes that you're doing here in Grasshopper, how they reflect in Revit. Uh, if you have Enscape, you can simply start the Enscape and you will see these changes happening uh, right away. All right, so here's the Enscape live view and all I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna change the height here. I'm gonna type 2000 and let's see what will happen. So you can see that the walls are gonna be uh, taller in uh, Revit viewport and also uh, you can see here this in Enscape. So it's very cool that uh, we can control both Rhino, Enscape, Grasshopper and Revit in one file in a very good workflow. So I hope that this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more of these uh, videos on Rhino Inside. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'd like to thank all of our Patreons. Thank you guys for supporting what we do and allowing us to create even more high quality content for you. If you'd like to get project files for this tutorial and all of our other tutorials, you can do so by becoming our Patreon. The link is in the description. And lastly, if you'd like to learn Rhino and Grasshopper for architecture in a step-by-step -step manner, I'd like to invite you to schedule your free one-on-one -on -one call with me where I'll tell you all the details about Rhino for Architects 2.0 course and how you can be a part of it. Take care.